Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're going to be messing around with Ritual Beasts, utilizing the new Link monster that has been confirmed for release as an OCG import in Extreme Force, Ritual Beast Ulti Human Falco. So I'm actually really happy that we got this Link monster sooner rather than later. Even though Ritual Beasts will probably not be anything close to a Tier 1 contender, they will continue to be a pretty strong rogue option as they were in the past. Uh, now, the deck does still have the same problems that it's always had, like the consistency issues, uh, going second is a problem, especially now more than ever. Uh, but we at least have cards that we can put in the deck to try and you know mitigate that, like with cards like evenly matched and stuff like that, and hand traps to prevent your opponent from getting to this massive board presence that you can't really deal with. But basically, this is a list that I've been testing around. I was testing it very casually through like live streams and stuff like that, um, and just like in my own free time before the Link Monster was announced for importation to the TCG. Uh, I didn't put a lot of time and effort really into it until recently because, again, Link Monster wasn't confirmed. I wasn't expecting for us to get this card until maybe like somewhere as late as the Mega Tens because that seemed like that'd be a great place to start importing the Link Brains pack cards in bulk. But no, we ended up getting it really, really soon, which I'm really happy for. Uh, but basically, this is sort of a standard take on like an upgraded form of older lists. Uh, you can obviously try to play 3 win, 3 gold sark to be alternative starters to Elder Conahawk, but I'm, I prefer to use the Field Spell engines, particularly because Oracle of Zephyr getting Zephyr and Pilica means that your Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampengu plays are also better, because that's more copies of that card you can have, because if you've watched my combo tutorial videos, then you'll know that if you draw into Pilica or Laura, or by proxy Oracle of Zephyr or Terraforming when you're doing an Elder Rampengu or Elder Conahawk play, that means you get to search Ambush Steed Steeds instead of having to search Laura in the combo sequence to continue the play and make it really good and really big. So I kind of like that over the like 3 win 3 gold sark version, as well as Brain Research Lab just plays really well with the entire rest of the deck, whereas the win gold sark package being maxed out is still very inclusive on only its own little bubble, and it gives you additional starters, but they're very limited in their scope. Uh, and so like it's just it's it, this seems like it's been working better for me on the whole But other than that, this is just a pretty standard like new take on an old ritual beast deck Like I said, um, I'm pretty familiar with ritual beasts. I played them a lot in their prime in 2015 I played them in early 2017 when Winda and ritual beast return were announced um, This is a deck that I'm, I'm pretty pretty well versed with in terms of it's one of my favorite archetypes that I've played in the game's history and so there's a lot of cool combos the Kimun Falcos allows, but basically I'll leave this deck's built, like the, de the building of this deck, the judging of it, I'll leave that up to you guys in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions, then definitely leave them down there. But other than that, let's just jump straight into a match and see how this deck can perform against some possibly top tier contending uh, decks for the Expo format. Alright, so I'm playing against one of my friends who is playing a uh, Spyro deck. He's playing more one of the more standardized lists, uh, which is fine because the deck doesn't really change. Um, at all uh, from Extreme Force's release. Uh, but so, I, as you can see, I've got a custom background and custom sleeves that I've made for uh, for this deck. Oh, I think he has a drone lock in his hand. That's going to be slightly unfortunate. Um, if, that, if that's actually the case. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Is this, is this? Yes, okay, there's the additional normal summon. Question marks. Um, but as you can see, uh, I made custom sleeves and custom background, and I'm going to use those, uh, I'm going to have those as uh, available rewards for my, uh, for my patrons and stuff like that, so that's, uh, that's something that's at least, in theory, cool, um, is I'm going to do this for all the different, uh, videos that I make, uh, for all the different, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro duels that I do with different decks, and I'll even make multiples for, like, this one. If I did another Ritual Beast video, I'd probably make another background at least, um, but so anyway... That, just that little disclaimer out of the way. Uh, I'll do these two, and then uh, chain this to summon this, and then summon the Rampangu. And then we'll get access to the Laura. Uh, search for Laura. Am I going to get drolled? Oh no, it doesn't look like I'm getting drolled. Okay, good. Alright, so, next step is to put Winda in Grave, because I need Winda. Um, or I could special the Conahawk and Banish Winda. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make these into Kamu and Falcos. Uh, I need access to a Paleo at some point. I think a Paleo happens first. Can't remember. Can't remember my own combos that I came up with. Unfortunate, isn't it? That's what happens when things happen weeks and weeks ago. 
Uh, but so, we'll just do this. And I'm going to banish a Paleo to normal summon uh, Laura. Unless I'm getting Gammoned. The thing is, he's playing Spirals. So I don't know if he's playing the going first or going second build. He just said he would play the standard build that he's been testing. So it's probably going second Spirals, which means that I have to deal with infinite hand traps um, of that, like, just wreck Ritual Beasts. Like, that's the problem, is that Ritual Beasts, I don't think, are anywhere near to being, oh, he's playing DD Crow. Oh, that's right, because he's playing the the uh, the Lyralisk uh, version of this deck. Oh, my God. Oh, no. That's a hard once per turn effect, right? Um, yeah, you can only use that effect once per turn. Um, and I have nothing that I can uh, that I can tag this out into. Okay, well then, we're just gonna have to pray. <laughs> Hope and pray. Um, but basically, Ritual Beasts, it has a decent enough spiral matchup in the essence of how Steeds interact against spirals, because Steeds is destruction that doesn't target. Um, so, like, there's that. Uh, but otherwise, um, there's not much else that really goes into play. Uh, the deck is still, like, very vulnerable to, like, hand traps. What is this? Throne of Assault? Oh my god. How hilarious. That means that I was supposed to just steeds this on activate, on summon. How ridiculous. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to put him on calling it wrong. Um, what do you choose? Spells? Yeah, he chose spells. And he targeted my steeds. You didn't call it right. Got him. Okay, so that was a risky play. Had to put him on that one. Uh, because now uh, he's calling monsters. And so he's revealing that. This is going to get summoned. And he's probably going to target my steeds, in which case I can steed both of his stuff. Uh, which is still good for me. Um, so like, this is still a kind of good situation. It just depends on what's in his hand. Um, that he could- oh, the Assault doesn't equip to tough. Never mind. I thought that this was an equip card. Okay, he's got Big Red. How did he draw a card? Oh, because of this. That's why. So now he can use tough. So yeah, it's still not a good position for me to be in. Um, okay, so there's that, and they can just kill this. So, I've got a Paleo, but nothing else. I can draw a Tamer, and use that with this. Oh my god, Foolish Burial Goods for rescue! He's still gonna get me! Yeah, so this is this is a problem. Ritual Beasts are really good. They're a really good deck. But they can't really compete with a lot of stuff that's new. Like, like he's just playing Spirals. And, like, I think the Pendulum Magician deck is better than Spirals as soon as Extreme Force releases. Because, um, like, that deck does, like, the exact same things in a little bit more of an unfair way. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm just... I'm getting absolutely destroyed. And, like, that's the thing. I know what my top card is. It's a Rampangu. It's not a Tamer. So yeah, this game is already over. <laughs> See, this is the unfortunate truth, is that you get hand trapped, and then you just can't, you know, do anything. So Ritual Beasts, while being a very good deck, I'm not saying Ritual Beasts are a bad deck at all. Um, they just, they're very fragile to very unfortunate turns of events, which are like, like that, a DD Crow on my Conahog. Um, funny thing is, is that if I had sent uh, if I had banished a Psychic and sent Winda, and then banished Winda for the Key Moon Falcos, I could have still continued my play, because I could have tagged out the Link Monster to summon Winda and uh, Conahawk from my Banish Zone. That's something that I should consider. So that's a minor mistake that I made, but of all the hand traps I was expecting, I wasn't expecting DD Crow. But so I'm still going to be dealing with this. Um... But so yeah, that would have changed at least a little bit, but not a huge amount. A little bit, but not a potential huge amount. It would have been like I'd have another Steed set, which would have been pretty good. Um, but so yeah, I'm dealing with this. Now I'm going to take a thousand from Brain Research Lab, because it had a counter on it for the normal summon, and now I've got to deal with Deco Talker and Sleeper, which I can't really do, because I'm drawing a Rampangu, and that's just unfortunate. Um, what is that? Do I know, like, did he, does he play Handywire? Did he search that card? No, okay. Good to know. Alright, so, I have no idea what these could be. At least I don't think I know what they could be. And now I've got a Rampangu. All I can really do is normal summon this and just die. <laughs> That's all I can do. All I can do is die. 
which is which is sucks. I, I want this deck to be better. I want this deck to be better positioned in the format, but unfortunately, it just isn't. It is just, it, that's just not how this works. <laughs> it's just not how this is gonna work. Um, but yeah, in phase sleeper, pop my paleo. Now, there's obviously ways you could build the deck if you're expecting to play against Spiral and you're expecting to play against Pendulum Magician. But the thing is, I think this deck is pretty well constructed in terms of it's got hand traps in it, it's got evenly matches in it, it's got everything that it sort of needs, and then it's got a good side deck built for it as well. Uh, but we're not playing sided games, so I just 100% lose uh, this one. So I'll be going first game two. That we are playing three. We're playing a, a match, so I'm either going to get two owed, or we are playing, um, or we're just playing three games. Uh, so that's something that we can work with. All right, and see now, now here's the other issue: is that the the deck is just somewhat inconsistent. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to normal summon Winda, and I'm going to set steeds. I'm going to pass. I've got Ash Blossom for double helix. I've got Max C for a super agent. I'm just going to steeds the tough as soon as it hits the board, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, last uh, Spiral Resort, which doesn't really matter because of Steeds, so that's good. Uh, but so, he's getting cues that I have hand traps, so it's up to him to decide which ones those are. They could be Ogre, they could be Ash or Maxi, so luckily, luckily because Resort is so open and what can what can mess with it, um, it's pretty good. Another another thing that might be worthwhile in this deck is like, maybe Cypher and Gear Gammas? I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and Steeds this so he has no knowledge of what the top card of my deck is. Um, and then if he has Big Red, or if he has Super Agent, or One for One, or anything like that, then I just max see him. And then when he goes into Double Helix, uh, it's good for me there. Like, the Tamer Window being on the board is actually really good, because it can either die and float. Aha! A One for One. Well, I'll max see this. Does he have Ash? He doesn't have Ash. He doesn't have Gamma. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> so he can summon Quick Fix, get Drone and stack my deck. Oh, he's just going straight for Drone. And that's an Oracle Zephyr, which means that's another Zephyr from Pilica, which I mean is actually kind of okay. It's not amazing, but it's kind of okay. But yeah, Ritual Beast is one of my favorite decks. It's one of my favorite decks and I want the deck to be better, but Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is much faster and much more insane than it was in um, than it was in 20... Uh, oh, and there's a Terraforming on top of my deck, too. I'm actually okay with drawing that, too. Um, it's much more insane than it was in 2015. Like, Necros did unfair things, and Burning Abyss did unfair things, and Shadals did unfair things, but they were all very contained in scope of what those unfair things were. Um, I'm going to Ash this now. Uh, so, like, Ritual Beast was able to, like, target that specific thing that they were doing and like mess with it it's like that's that's how the deck had success but currently all of these decks that are in the current format like the new pendulum magicians with electromite spirals um and then everything in between that's just slightly under it like the abc decks and stuff like that there's they're way way too involved in terms of what they do but i might be able to win this game um i might be able to win this game he has master plan in his graveyard uh, so the double helix summoning from deck actually didn't even seem like a huge thing. He was probably just going to, uh, let's see, well he called spell, so I, I knew that was there. So we've got the terraforming, which we can get brain research lab. I've got Oracle of Zephyr, which can get another Zephyr from Pilica. I've got Gold Sark, which can Gold Sark for something. Um, but this makes my Zephyr from Pilica into, a, uh, into an elder, essentially. So I guess this could work. This might be able to work for me pretty well. Because um, this can Foolish, this can Summon, yeah, okay. So what we'll do is that we're going to we're going to activate this. I don't really care if it stays on the board. I prefer the Brain Research Lab staying out. Uh, but so I will Normal Summon this. And use its effect to Foolish an Apaleo. And then I will activate Brain Research Lab. And then I will normal summon the will the, uh, the Pilica. <laughs> I almost called it Willica. I don't know why. Uh, so we'll do this. We'll do this for a Paleo. I'm just trying to turn the gears in my mind. DD Crow again. Okay, that's fair. I'm actually okay with that this time because that's fine. 
so what we'll do is I can I can make these two into the uh, Link monster, and then banish one of them uh, to get this Conahawk on the board. So that's fine. Uh, or I could just go ahead and make Lightning Chidori. That'd be pretty valuable as well. Um, at least in thought. In thought and in possible prayer. Who knows? Um, I can normal summon a second time, so that's something I need to respect. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go for the. I'm gonna go for a Conahawk search first before I do anything else. Uh, with these two right here. Nothing has used its special summon yet for the turn, so I'm going to target uh, a Paleo to Grave and Conahawk to Grave, and then I'm going to tag out this for the Winda and the Conahawk. So those get summoned here and here, and then I get to search for steeds to prevent my opponent from being able to play again next turn. I just need to out this this turn. That's the only issue, is that I need to out it this turn. But So I can activate this now, uh, getting an Elder into circulation for another name. Uh, so I've got two Tamers that haven't been specialed, and I've got two Beasts that haven't been specialed. Uh, so that's good. And I can make these into the fusion, and then make the link, uh, bring back a Paleo, yes. Okay, so that's what we'll do, is that I'll take this, and this, make those into Conahawk again, then activate this, targeting two, um, I'm going to put a Paleo back in Grave again, I'm going to try to do that exact same play, uh, and then I'm going to put Winda in Grave. Or I'm going to tag out into Rampangu. Yeah. Uh, so target a Paleo, target Rampangu, and then chain the tag out uh, for uh, Elder, and then for the Rampangu. So that's good. So we'll summon these over here so they're out of the way. Uh, get my search for Ambush. And so now uh, I can activate this. I can go ahead and get win in the grave by banishing one of these, put win in grave, there we go, and then I can make the link monster, I haven't special Pilika yet this turn, actually, have I? It didn't give me a prompt to, spe yeah, it did give me a prompt to special that, it did, it 100% did, okay, so we'll get rid of Elder and Conahawk for this up here, then we'll activate this, uh, I'll banish the I'll banish the Conahawk from Grave, summon this from my hand, use this guy's effect to wait what? I haven't summoned a Paleo. Is it because I attempted to special a Paleo? Oh well, at least this is big because it's getting the boost, so I can attack over this. That's a bit weird, but okay, whatever. <laughs> I'll go with it. Sure. Um, so I'll attack this. Is a paleo not in my graveyard? It is. That's weird. It never hit the it never hit the board. Is it because I attempted to special it and then it got DD crowed? I thought it didn't register unless it actually hit the board. Okay. Oh well. Whatever. Works for me, I guess. Uh, so I'll go for this uh, with these two over here, uh, and I'll use it. Uh, I'll target this to go to grave, and I'll target this to go to grave. I don't believe I can tag it out. No, I cannot. So I'll just get another steeds. And I've got a live tag out for it, so that's good. So I'll set this, and I'll end my turn. I'll hold A. That dies. Don't care. Uh, I just wanted to use the Pilica for the fusion, because I didn't want it to die and go to my extra deck. So that's, that's the reason for that. I wanted one to be out there. So I'll summon these two. Uh, and Rampangu can be summoned here, and I want Winda to be summoned here. And so now I've got double steeds for three, I've got an ambush, so this actually worked. This was actually a game that I didn't expect to win, but this actually worked. Which was surprising. Didn't expect that at all, but I'm gonna have a big kind of problem <laughs> next game, because I don't know if he's playing going first or going second spirals. I guess I'll find out. Um, because there's standardized builds of going first and going second spiral. Um, I can only expect that he's playing, uh, going second spiral, but at the same time, I've seen a DD Crow in his deck twice, and that's more conducive to being going first spiral, because there's the Lyra Luce Xyz monster that you make. 
Um, so, kind of curious, kind of worried, and kind of scared. Okay, so he can bring back Super Agent um, or Tough. If he brings back Tough, I just Steeds immediately. If he brings back eight, if he brings back Master Plan, I Steeds immediately. If he brings back, okay, he's bringing back Master Plan. Okay, so I'll hold down A. Uh, I'm going to Steeds immediately upon it hitting the board. I do not want him searching anything. Uh, so we'll Steeds these two. And that'll be that. The master plan is going to get a search, which is a bit unfortunate, but I feel like I can deal with it with the second steeds. Um, oh, he's summoning sleeper. Oh, it's going to be a problem. Oh, that's going to be a problem and a half. Oh, my lord. Well, I can, if he targets ambush and steeds, I can just go ahead and steeds him. But, like, this is so... This deck plays through my back row so effectively. With the Sleeper. I didn't even think about that. I should have just left the Master Plan on the field. I should have just hit the Quick Fix. Didn't even think about the fact that Sleeper could just pop out. Um, yeah, sure. So, he's gonna more than likely target my two back row. And if he does, then... That's going to be the problem. Ah, tough. Interesting. Last resort on that. Uh, I have to go ahead and Steeds it. I have to Steeds it now. He's going to bring back Double Helix, but I don't know if he can do any like good plays with it. But he can bring back the Sleeper. Yeah, he's targeting Sleeper. He's chaining Sleeper to destroy cards. Um, so, depending on what he destroys... Targeting that, and targeting... What else, my man? What else are you targeting? This is scary. I should have actually just left the Master Plan on the field. I should have just steeds away the Quick Fix, and left the Master Plan. Okay. And the window. Well, interesting choice. Okay. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to summon this from Grave, and a Paleo from Grave. Uh, so, what is this? This is a Paleo. He can go here. Uh, Wind can go here. Uh, and cards to destroy. I will just destroy the Wind. Or the Rampangu. Because Rampangu... It's, it was tagged into this turn, yeah? Okay, just the Rampangu. Uh, and then I'll use Wind as effect. And I'm going to summon... Uh, ulti Petalfin for my extra deck. Yeah, I had to pop that Rampang here so that I opened an extra deck spot. Uh, and then I can Apaleo at any point uh, to make the Petalfin bigger. Uh, so, that's that's an option. Uh, this can tag out into these two that are left over at the end of the turn. Uh, but otherwise, not. I don't know how... I don't know what he does without being able to double helix into master plan and he also doesn't know what the top card of my deck is what did he call well, that's an evenly match what did he even call did he call he called uh he actually called trap cards insane <laughs> did, wait did he have anything that told him what the card, card what the top card of my deck was i don't think he has wait yeah he no because i shuffled my deck since last turn he droned last turn or several turns ago, his yeah, his last turn, um, and uh, and then my deck got shuffled, and I also was maxing him, so I don't even yeah, because he called spells. Spells was the last card he saw. That was just a that was just a leap of faith. That was, uh, so now he added the sleeper back to his hand. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's what he did. He revealed with Super Agent. I completely missed that. I just thought the Super Agent had gotten added to his hand. No, he revealed it with Super Agent and then called it with Double Helix. I see. I see. I see, I see, I see. Now, suddenly, everything makes sense. <laughs> suddenly, everything makes infinitely more sense. I had a lapse, um, a lapse of, um, of judgment. A breach of focus. Alright. How is this going to continue? I think that I 100% lose this game. I don't like it. 
I don't like the fact that I lose this game. Decode Talker Talker. Just he's just on that and he's got sleeper. Oh. Oh no. Okay, well, sure. <laughs> I I still think that I lost that game. This is why I don't really like Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro for like combo decks like that. I, I don't really like it for that, but oh well. That that's a legitimate that's a legitimate loss. But I feel like that I don't have anything that I could do to him if he drops sleeper. If he drops Sleeper on me, and he still has that Last Resort in his hand, because it never equips to the Sleeper, so it's still there. It's 100% still in his hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm counting that game as a loss. I'm counting this game as a loss because he has... you got to understand, I know what he has in his hand. He has Spiral Sleeper in his hand, he has Last Resort in his hand. He can summon that Sleeper, equip Last Resort to it. On this turn, pop attempt to pop Sleeper, pop two of my cards, right? And then even if I tag out these, like if he tar he's going to target a Paleo and win, most likely. And then even if I tag this out and start my turn with these two, uh, these two Ritual Beasts, he can just immediately just go <laughs> activate Sleeper, pop your two monsters at the start of my turn. Because he's got Sleeper Last Resort. So yeah, this is 100% a loss. I'm counting this as a loss. I'm cutting this video here because of, uh, of one, time constraints, and two, because there were some good plays made in this game by both of us. And I'm okay with keeping it as it is, because I do believe the game reached a conclusion. Because I know he has Sleeper, I know he has Last Resort. The only, and I know he has Super Agent in his hand, which is also a follow-up for next turn as well. So, I, I'm okay with calling it here. So yeah, unfortunately, that's just sort of the state of affairs. Is that Ritual Beasts are still a very good deck, but they're only going to be good in, like, Rogue Contention and stuff like that. And even then, like, it's kind of, you can kind of have back and forth with Spirals like you just saw me have. Um, the game might have been a little bit different if I had just, you know, left a master plan on the field, but probably wouldn't have been that different because then I would have just had to, like, Steeds another one monster and any other monster you could put on the board would make double helix anyway. So, there are things that could have changed, potentially gone different ways, but at the same time, I was always going to be at a disadvantage in this matchup. Ritual Beasts, unfortunately, it's, it's not 2015 anymore, so the deck can't really be anything close to tier 1 status, unfortunately, which sucks. Like I've said, I love this deck. I want this deck to be a good deck. And it is a good deck in terms of practical standpoint and standards of it's a deck and it functions and it does good things. But the thing is, every deck nowadays is capable of continually throwing cards onto the board regardless of how many you pop, which was not the case in 2015. In 2015, it was very, very you know easy for you to use one steeds on two to three critical monsters and just end a turn. It was very easy for you to do that. That's not really the case anymore. But anyway, there's obviously some different ways we could play Ritual Beasts going into the Extreme Force format. So if you have any suggestions or anything like that, then definitely leave them in the comments down below. And I might revisit this deck for another dual video sometime in the future. Especially if my friend is willing to play me again because he's someone that I play test with a lot. He's a very competent player. He's very much someone that is not what you typically find on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. He's just, he downloaded Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro yesterday. He's not really used to the timer. So that's a bit unfortunate on that one. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, check out the links in the description to my Facebook fan page and my personal Patreon page if you want to support me, connect with me, chat with me, whatever. Check out those links down below. And other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. All that sort of stuff. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. But now the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.